Well, hello everyone and welcome again to Painless Universal Conversation with myself, Anne Walsh. Today's conversation is really helping you understand and learn from your own intuition. We all have intuition, we all know when that that thing comes up in our self that says you shouldn't go on this date, you shouldn't, you shouldn't eat this, you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't be in that relationship, you should get out of that job and you keep going because you don't trust your own intuition. My guest today, Katie Beechin, will be telling you about her own experiences and why she believes now more than ever is the time to trust your own intuition. Before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about Katie. Katie's mission is to help as many people as possible connect with their intuition, find unconditional love and self-acceptance. She's learned that with things, health, happiness, and even miracles, with all of this, miracles are possible. She's an internationally known medical and emotional intuitive and licensed professional counselor with over 30 years of experience. She's right the intuitive empathy and medium ability since she was a young child, but was fearless of them until she entered therapy to understand how to utilize it. During our discussion today, we'll be talking about her own intuition, how she found it, what drove her to understand the meaning of intuition, and why she feels now more than ever we need to learn about it and not just learn about it, learn how to use it to be able to appreciate who we are. I'm super excited to talk to my guest, Katie, to understand why she does this, or talk more about her book, and most importantly, understand how she used her own intuition to heal herself. Meet my amazing guest, Katie, as she shares her story. Well, hello everyone, and welcome again to Painless Universal, a conversation with myself, and Welsh. Have you ever wondered about your intuition? I and mean, then sometimes your intuition tells you about your own feeling. You feel something and you know, if I just do that one thing, my body will get back to normal. Or, you know, you just listen to your intuition, which is something we all find difficult to do. My guest, as I said in my introduction, Katie, she's an internationally known as a medical and emotional intuitive. She'll be helping us to help ourselves find that unconditional love, which is something we're always wondering, does it really exist? And I, my question actually, why I'm actually having this thing, because I have that question, I that burning question, which I was one answered. Is there something called unconditional love out there? Katie, how are you today? I'm great. Nice to be here. I am super excited to be here with you because your own experiences has helped you, guided you in this path. This didn't just come out of, oh, I think I'm good at this. This right. came from your own personal experience as well. Then you also went into the studying part of it. You studied about it. You understand more than most people ever will. Before we get started into all of this, why did you do this? And the most beautiful question which I ask everyone is, who are you? Well, um... This really started from something that most people would think is horrible. And it was a very difficult experience, but it was really one of the best things that ever happened to me. And that was as the result of growing up in a dysfunctional family and being bullied. I developed an eating disorder, which was really severe and pretty serious depression. I really didn't want to live that way anymore. I was throwing up three times a day and I was miserable and it had gone on for many years. So I had decided that either I was going to take my life or I was going to get better. And that was at 16. It was really divine intervention that made me decide to live and to call our pediatrician and tell him what was going on. Wow. That was the early 80, 1983. So no one really talked that much about eating disorders. And at first he just said, you know, you'll, you'll be fine, I'm sure. And I had the sense to say, no, I'm not fine. This is bad. And he gave me the name of a therapist. I didn't tell my parents. Um, they weren't very supportive anyway. I had a job in a car, so I paid for it. And I went. The therapist was Jungian, so based on Carl Jung's 
psychology. And she taught me a bunch of things. One was how to connect to my intuition. <clears throat> One was to accept and learn to work with my intuitive gifts, like the mediumship and the knowing things before they happened and the knowing what people were thinking and feeling, which had been really scary because I had been pick, you know, picking up a lot of, of evil stuff. Um, and then she taught me about self-love and self-acceptance. And I didn't even know what those concepts were. Mm -hmm. So the things that she taught me literally saved my life. And I went on to become a therapist, but also you know write my book and become a medical intuitive. And it's basically using my experiences and all of the things that I have learned to then go on and help others. When you look at your childhood, right? So, you know, look at the very beginning. I know you, you, you did say, say a little bit about your story, but what was your childhood really like when you look back at it? Um, it wasn't, you know, no one would look back and say, you know, I guess from the outside, everything looked fine. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we lived in a nice house. We, you know, weren't rich, but we had enough money to do what we need to do. I went to a you know, good school, I got good grades. Um, but my father was very controlling. And he, I now know he likely had, you know, borderline personality disorder and bipolar, and it was untreated. He had a very bad gambling addiction. So he wasn't around a lot, which was good and bad. But it was an atmosphere in which you couldn't be your true self. You couldn't express your feelings because you were told, no, that's not what's happening. Um, my mom, I learned later, lived really with a base of shame. And so while she was a successful person, um, she really didn't have the courage or the self-esteem to stand up to him. Yeah. And so it was very much an atmosphere of not knowing who I was, not feeling supported, um, a lot of chaos. You know, you never knew which version of my father was coming in the door. So we didn't know if he was gonna explode or if he was gonna be a great person. And a lot of people really learn be, to be an empath from these types of situations because you have to try and figure out what people are going to do and say before they do them in order to protect yourself. So, That's true. you know, you, you lose yourself, you end up feeling everything they're feeling and then trying to conform to what they need. And being an empath can be great, but also it can, you know, have its, have its problems too. So yeah. I was very shy. Mm -hmm. I had no self-esteem. I was a perfectionist and really, um, you know, had, I'm very creative and had a lot going for me, but I just didn't know how to get there and didn't know how to get past, you know, all the issues. That's really, that's really strange that you said this, that about the absorbing other people's energy, because I tend to do this. I'm a cancer by star sign. But one of the things I know for myself is I try, I absorb people's personality and it's so draining, especially when it's negative, when the person is negative. It sucks everything out of you and you are trying your best to remold yourself into this person and in that in that process it sucks you out because you forget who you are and you can't be your true self so I, I'm not, I love that you really did mention this because that's self I think this is something a lot of people have to do especially women who might be in an abusive or controlling relationship or even men who are in those kind they tend to mold themselves just to be in this protege so they don't get and not be exactly. they fit that that they fit that which is um i'm glad you said that because people have never really thought about the how much that sucks away from them and when they're away from that person how much freedom they find you know? right right and then you don't even realize it's happening you no. know you're so used to it and you know i always tell people when you're feeling anxious or depressed or whatever ask yourself is that about you is that about something real in your life or is that about something that you're picking up from other people or are you kind of reliving old emotions and traumas and things? Cause yeah. a lot of the time we don't even know what we're feeling. Yeah. And then it's about things 
other than what we really think it's about. So it's, right. it's so important to be in our feelings, even if they're uncomfortable. Absolutely. So you've documented um, your success with um, lymph lymph disease. You know, you've recovered from it yourself. You know, which is something I really applaud you from for, especially taking that action upon yourself to recover from something. Which is, I would love you. I'd love you to tell us about. You also talk about the digestive issue you have, cancer. You know, um, the autoimmune disease, depression, anxiety, eating disorder, adolescent and childhood concern, and other issue. Tell me about your life and this pain and how you took it upon yourself to turn this narrative around. Yeah, I honestly, it has to be divine intervention because very few 16 year old girls, um, you know, even let people know, like I hadn't let anyone know what I was doing. I was too ashamed. Mm -hmm. So the first time I let anyone know was me telling the pediatrician mm -hmm. and, um, I remember the day I did it and, and um, you know, then having the courage to actually go to therapy. And I really think that it must have been that I was meant to do the work that I'm doing now and help others and take my experiences and help people understand that you can go through, you know, nasty stuff and come out the other side. Yeah. So even the way that I did therapy, um, it was very much listening to my guides, kind of letting them work through me. And that's the way I, you know, I do my work. But, um, and I'm not going to not give myself credit for strength because <laughs> I know I've been through a lot of stuff and I'm an incredibly strong person. Yeah. But when you don't know that, um, you know, you, you don't realize it. And a lot of the time you can only figure that out I go th going through really difficult things. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, it it was a uneven process. It's not linear. There were days I felt like I've got this, and there were days I felt like mm -hmm. I am the biggest loser, and this is never going to happen. But it was over. I think. The full eating disorder from maybe the time I really developed it to the time I could say I was really, you know, healed was, was probably about 12 years, which is a long time. Mm -hmm. And um, for anyone dealing with any of this stuff at all, just kind of keep, keep at it and don't be hard on yourself. I'm, we can all be hard on ourselves, you know, I'm yeah. a great example of that, but try not to be hard on yourself and, and allow the process and know that you're not the only one going through that. Um, and every time I went through a difficult thing, it was like, okay, what's this about? You know, what am I supposed to learn from it? Um, how can I respond in the healthiest way possible? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so it just kind of this building thing. And I think that's why it took me all those years to finally write my book. <laughs> so. I, I, it, I love that, that, you know, I know I'm going through this. It's just also to understand that you're not alone. There are other people going through it. And if you could beat it and you're also encouraging other people to keep going and to try and do um, beat it as well. So that's really true. That's a really positive message that came out of that. Um, as a medical and emotional in, in, intuitive and counselor, you've got 30 years of experience. How did you decide to not only heal your own self from your own trauma of what you went through, but to also um, decide on a different approach of healing? Because you, you say there's a different approach and you've, you've studied this, you've done it for about 30 years. What, 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 what do you mean by this different approach of healing? Well, it really developed over time. Um, and it really started with all of the Jungian psychology stuff, which really focuses on trusting your intuition, connecting with your intuition, um, learning about self-love and self-acceptance and not keeping your feelings in this shadow space that you're ashamed of or afraid of. And Jung really was very ahead of his time and he was one of the first ones to talk about the mind-body connection and the connection between physical and emotional healing and spiritual. So all of the people now, like Louise Hay and Tara Rock, and I mean, so many people now, all of what they say is just based on Jungian psychology, you know, um, Carolyn Meath, all these people. So um, some of the things I do with people, I didn't invent for sure. It's, it's Jungian ways of connecting with intuition and things. But as I 
worked with people over time and allowed my own guides to sort of take over, um, they helped me to design the way that I do my medical intuitive readings, which is quite different. Yeah. And just using a name and age, um, nothing else, I create a very extensive four page report. And these intuitive soul paintings, which kind of look like that, um, but they're all different. Some people are bugs, some people are animals, some people are plants, some people are like, they're literally like totally different. And the colors all mean something, the everything means something. Um, so the report talks about a person's whole entire life. Like, so it could be childhood, relationships, career, their family. Um, I get information for people who have passed that are still connected with them. I get information for family members. So it's really looking at an entire person's life and everything that relates to their health and well-being. And it's not just sickness. It's also people who just, they want to know more about their life purpose or their career or how to have better relationships or self-love because it's all connected. And so I send the report in painting before we meet. And then we go over it during a meeting. Um, kind of working through the report, people can ask questions about that and other things. Like it's a very give and take thing. And we look at the root causes for everything that's been going on. Um, address as many as we possibly can. Um, sometimes if it's more physical stuff and it's you know beyond what I'm able to do, because I can't diagnose legally or ethically and I don't like people who do that. Yeah. Um, I have, you know, doctors that I work with to refer them to and other things. And so they can verify what I've found and take it further in terms of testing and treatment. But it's a very, very holistic approach. Oh, that's wonderful. And your mission is to help people find unconditional love and self-acceptance. Um, you know, when I started the intro, I asked you, does that really exist? What is unconditional love and how can we find self-acceptance acceptance within ourselves? What's really sad is we're all born with it and then we unlearn it. Really? You know, we, we unlearn it from people who don't know how to get it themselves or don't love themselves or have been through trauma or have mental illness or addiction. So we learn how we feel about ourselves and we either learn that we have intuition or not to trust it from the people that we're around as we get older. Mm -hmm. So I can honestly say the hardest part about my recovery wasn't stopping the behavior. It was learning to love and accept myself. And what I, I guess my sort of definition of that is being able to look at your total self, the parts you like and the parts that you don't, emotionally, physically, and spiritually, and saying, you know, this is where I'm at. It's, it's looking at it without judgment. So then you can assess all these parts of yourself and say, well, these are the parts that work for me. Um, these are the parts that are not working for me. These are the things that are hurting other people. These are the things that are holding me back. And then look at it and say, you know what? I'm not a bad person, but I need to, to do something about that. And, and then you can work on it. And then you can also build up the parts that you already like, but it's not something we do overnight. It's a step-by-step -step process. Um, when people say, I don't know who I am, because that happens a lot. One of the things I suggest is that they just make a list of anything they can think of about themselves that come to mind, comes to mind. And it could be, you know, I like the color blue. It could be, I have blonde hair. It, mm. We are made up of so many facets. And so the more you start thinking about yourself and getting to know who you are, again, without judgment, the more authentic you can be. And if you're authentic, then you have more self-love and pride and you don't feel like you have to hide and yes. you can then have better relationships and not have to put up with people's crap and you know find the job you like and all that other kind of stuff but it's it's really about those factors 
and you talk about the health, happiness, and even miracles are possible when you start, you know, really accepting yourself and embracing who you, you know, loving yourself for who you are. In you, you're, you're really, Katie, I think the thing we are really known for is your intuition. You teach this a lot and you, I can't ask you a question without asking about an intuition question. Sure, how sure, can, sure. How can we listen to our own body and our own intuition? How yeah. We, you know, we, we, there's so much that our body, us, there's so many signs out there saying, don't do this, don't be in that relationship, this is bad for you. And you can feel it. Well, don't do, go, don't go to that business deal that might be bad, bad for you. Don't. And you're like, nah. <laughs> so what do you mean by intuition how can we start listening to our intuition yes it um all of this is in my book so mm -hmm. people want more information um but i would love to teach you my definition of intuition and my favorite way of connecting and this actually saved my life and helped me heal so when i think about intuition it's young's definition of god within it's this all-knowing force that is with all of us it knows everything about you. Um, it accepts you and loves you unconditionally. I, it's always with you, taking care of you. It's kind of like once you find it, even if you're by yourself, you're not alone anymore. And so it helps you to not care as much about what other people think because you have this solid base you know, within yourself. Yeah. I kind of describe it as um, like your, your pet. They don't care what you weigh or what you look like or if you had a bad day or they just love you unconditionally. So that's something that we can learn to do for ourselves. And my favorite way of connecting in the most powerful way that I know is to physically write out a question or a statement or your feelings mm. and direct it to your intuition. I'll give you some examples in a moment. And by your intuition, let's say I don't know what my intuition is, write to God write to the universe, write to the tree, write to your whatever, but just find something that you consider loving and supporting and write to that. So you write to it and then just sit and wait for whatever you hear, see, and feel in response to what you wrote and write that down and then write back to it. Like you're writing to a friend yeah. and then see what you get and write that down. So you're having a written conversation yeah. and you're writing down both sides. And you can do it for five minutes. You can do it for 20. Um, sometimes I'll just say, do you have anything to tell me? You know, um, sometimes I will ask a question about anything in my life. Literally, sometimes I'll just start writing because you don't always know what's going on. Um, and I'll just ask for feedback. This is also a wonderful technique for connecting with people from the other side. You can write to them and they will write back to you. And it could be a human or a pet. Um, it's a really important technique for receiving communication from your body. So, and some symptoms. I really believe that symptoms are signals from our intuition that we need to wake the hell up and pay yeah. attention. Yeah. So with the eating disorder, um, I wrote to it like it was my friend instead of like it was my enemy and something I had to fight and said, why are you here? What do you want me to know? How can I be more authentic? Um, how can I help you heal? You know, um, and by doing that, instead of feeling like I was a victim and this was happening to me, I was an active participant in my healing. Yeah. And I didn't look at it as poor me. It was like, this, is, this has a purpose. You know, this is serving me. Yeah. Um, and I've done it. That's what I do now. That's how I talk to my guides. That's how, when I found out I had Lyme disease, um, I wrote to it and said, okay, what's with this? You know, and, and it said, it's time to put off writing the proposal for your book. <laughs> so... <laughs> that's really amazing. No, I, lo I loved the way you said that and write to it, write to that person, write to your other, be, and anything that's giving you a bit of bothersome, making you worried or whatever it is. Cause I remember I, I didn't write to my, but I just called it my friend, my sickle yeah, cell. Yeah. I called it my friend and said, I can't say you're a horrible person because you've made, you've taught me a lot as well. 
about myself. So you've taught me about my body, how painful things could be. So I'm not gonna, I you know, because if I use the word like um, such as you're an enemy, I don't like you, I hate you. I think it's almost like me hating a part of me. Correct. So I thought you're here, you're part of me. The do- I'm not getting healed from you right now. So in the process, while you're here, let's see how we could work together to better each other. So yeah. you saying that was really, really good. And I never thought about the writing method as well. And um, that giving takes me on to my next question because I saw you wrote an article and you titled this article, this is what I thought, I thought about intuition and it saved my life. I love that article, it's short and sweet. And how did the whole intuition save your own life? I know you've talked briefly about it, but what else did it do to save your life? Yeah, so, um, and I just wanna say one more thing about the writing thing. When you're writing and sitting there, you have to stop what you're doing. So it grounds you, it helps, because you're using your body, you're automatically connected to it. It becomes a mindfulness meditation. I'm crappy at meditating because my head doesn't stop. I'm really good at doing it in that way. You know, so there's so many amazing things to do that. And my Jungian therapist taught me this. I didn't invent it. I wish I had, but it was by doing that, that I learned to be in my body, be in myself, um, listen to what was working and what wasn't. Um, your intuition guides you about everything. So it was, who in my life do I need to separate from? You know, I need to get some distance between me and this family. Um, mm-hmm. I need to think about things differently. It, it really helps you to be your true authentic self. Absolutely. If you can do that, then I believe that is really the root of all health and happiness because people will come to me with you know a stomach thing or a whatever the thing is it doesn't even matter anymore pain and chronic stuff that they have not been able to get rid of forever and so we'll go through stuff and talk about it but I'm like uh and they don't really mention their relationship which is why it's good that my these things come up in my reports right Mm. but I will say um you know you really can't get better if you're in this really unhappy marriage. It's not gonna happen. Mm. And they'll say, well, when I feel better, I'll leave. Or when I feel better, I'll look for another job or I'll start exercising or I'll change whatever. And it's like, it needs to be in the reverse. You need to start listening to what your intuition tells you to do and making yourself happy and caring about yourself and treating yourself better in order for the healing to occur, you know, and being in the state you're in now, being treated badly, yeah. it's just not gonna happen. So it's the reverse order of having that communication. Yeah. Your book, I have to go into your book because that is a really good book. Heal from within, a guidebook for intuitive healing. What are the messages that you wanted to put across when you wrote this book and how could people get access to your book? For one of the things I really want to stress is that you don't have to be an intuitive or a psychic to have strong communication with your intuition. Hmm. We all have it. We use medical intuition every day, even for our kids. You know, if you get a stomach ache or a headache or whatever, you have to decide, okay, do I need to rest? Do I need to lay down? Mm. Do I need to like chill out? Do I need to, you know, am I at the point where I need to like take something or, you know, if it goes on long enough, do I need to go see a doctor? So all of those little things that we just do without thinking about it, that's connecting to your body and that's using medical intuition. Mm. So I really try not to make this all woo woo and unattainable and I want people to know that they, they can heal themselves, you know, and that of course we need help. We need other people. We need, I mean, of course, of course, of course, but you know, the work really is about trusting yourself and connecting with you. So the book takes people through as if I were doing a reading on them. Um, It's not a substitute for a reading. I'm not going to say that, but it really takes people through the steps of 
connecting with your intuition and identifying the things that you want to work on, identifying your strengths, um, looking at your whole body and going through the chakras, which are energy centers, mm -hmm. and seeing how all of the things that you have kind of fit together. You know, you, oh. you put all the pieces of the puzzle together mm -hmm. and, um, and then it teaches, you know, how to make those intuitive paintings. Um, it, it shows them like the exact template I use that I get information from my guides from. And so it really, empowerment is an incredibly important thing to me that I empower people and that I teach them to trust their own intuition and not substitute anybody else's. Now that's it. really wonderful. Yeah. Even when I send them the reports and stuff, I know how accurate my guides are. They're, they're pretty amazing, but it's like, if it doesn't resonate with you, yes. then we need to talk about that because mm -hmm. it needs to make sense to you. Maybe it's for somebody you know or whatever, but we still need to work through that. You know? Oh, wow. Oh, no, I love, yeah. Intuition is such a powerful thing. And so it's, 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 it's a, you know, it's a priceless gift. If you know how to utilize it well, it will take you places. You, you could even know how to communicate with your boss better. You communicate with your relationship, communicate with your kids. Exactly. Yeah, no, I think it's just a wonderful thing. And this fact that you do this and you do it, you've put, written this book that's out there to help people and give them that guide, the template on how to find their own intuition, how to navigate it. You step aside. I think that's really good. And I'm really so glad you did this. When you think of intuition, does nutrition and health play an important role in our mental, mental oh, understanding of it? Certainly. I mean, everything we do comes into play with our mental, um, emotional, physical, and spiritual health. Um, I think nutrition is extremely important because not only does it help give us energy or calm us down, you know, there's, there's neurochemicals that are created because of what we eat or neurochemicals we need that are not created, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but if your gut is in good health and if you are getting the proper nutrition, then you, your body can make everything it needs um, you know, for the brain to work properly, for the rest of the body to work properly, to sleep well, mm -hmm. to have energy. And, and you don't have to have, you know, there's no such thing as a perfect diet. And I don't advocate for any one kind of diet. Like people can make being a vegan work or being a vegetarian work or eating meat or whatever. And there's, there's challenges, you know, to each one. Um, but I think people need to do what's best for them. Yeah. And, but yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's definitely huge as is movement. If I did not exercise every day vigorously, I would not be a fun person to be around. <laughs> so yours is definitely to do with exercise as well. Finally, Katie, before I let you go, um, can you share how you put your own learnings because you've been through so much and you've utilized that to learn. How have you put your own learnings and experience into finding your own love and self-acceptance? It took a while um, and it's an ongoing journey. It's an ongoing journey. So it's, it was a process. It was like, okay, um, these are the things you like about yourself. There may be a whole ton more on the other side of things you don't like. That's how it started. But I was like, I'm going to like one thing, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to like the color of my eyes or something. I'm just going to start with this little thing. And then eventually I was like, you know, liking myself, loving myself doesn't mean I'm conceited because when we're little girls a lot of people yeah. tell us that doesn't mean I'm conceited I can take credit for things um I can look at the things I like and then also more objectively look at the things that I want to change yes um you know I'm I'm not gonna lie I'm a very driven person I really care about what I do and the message of this book and running your own business is not full of joy all the time um so, but it's like tempering that drive and a little bit of perfectionism in there um, with also giving yourself a break and being like, you know, you don't have to do things perfectly and there's no such thing as it. And I catch myself too, I'll look in the mirror and find the one thing on my face that I don't like or something or like a bit of, you know, the cellulite in my leg. I'm like, dear God, like you teach people not to do this. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's this constant sort of. Trying to, yeah. Yeah. If I had it, if I had the answers for every single thing, you know, but that's, 
that's not what we're here to do. So no. uh, it's it's constantly a work in progress. Oh, that's good to know because if someone like you could honestly say that, I think the rest of the world would feel comfortable that this is not an overnight success. Even if they read your book, it's not going to happen overnight. It's a constant work in progress because like the pandemic has taught us, yeah. life is so unpredictable. This you can't you can't guarantee to them the every, you can't even guarantee the minute, let alone the hour or the day. Yeah. So it's just really to be grateful in each day, find one thing you appreciate it for, and then your intuition actually grows even bigger because then you have time to focus on your inner peace and find, um, understand and listen to your intuition. Because one thing I noticed when that when you're stressed out, the intuition goes away. It goes off. Yes, it does. It, it does, does right. It we, we become, we start living in fear mode mm. instead of allowing spirit to take care of things yeah. and trusting it. And you just feel like if you're not on every moment and you're not like in control of your moment, that everything's going to fall apart. And it's yeah. actually the, the opposite. And I have to say, having children and a very amazing husband is really good motivation for staying on top of my crap and being aware of it and being like, um, you have to take care of this because if not you're going to be a horrible parent and a horrible wife and because when when we were kids we were not the priority you know in our family and so I wanted to break that cycle and do it differently for my own family oh Katie I'm really honored that you took this time out to talk to me honestly I've enjoyed every aspect of it where can where could people get your book I'm based we're based out in the United Kingdom but people around the world listen to our conversation yeah it's literally it's literally everywhere I do have a just um distribution in the UK and everywhere um Amazon and Barnes and Noble and um yeah literally everywhere um yay um and then from I have a website that's katiebeecher.com and on Instagram and and all that good stuff but um yeah it's it's available pretty much wherever books are available so yay we're appreciative of that and we thank you so much for your time We've learned so much and we, we I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. So much. Thank you.